Hey kids, here are two teams that are both inspired by one dude's care post in the Smoggin metagame thread about the value of Secret Trick Room. Secret Trick Room basically just being that instead of committing to a full room team and inevitably ending up with six Pokemon that all fucking lose to Spectriere or Urshifu, you just make a good team with Pinky in the brain as your bulky pivot like you would anyway but with Trick Room slotted in over Scald so that you can surreptitiously set it up whenever you're in the best position to cheese your opponent with whatever slow wall breaker you just happen to be using. As it turns out, it's shockingly easy to slide Trick Room in over Scald because 97% of the time, you're just going to want to click Future Sight or Teleport anyway. Isn't Slowbro cool? Isn't it cool that they finally made a Pokemon for people like me? Victims of severe lead poisoning. This first team actually originally started as just an excuse for me to use Reggie like E again after they added its incredible 3D model to Showdown. I'm still riding the Choice Band Explosion train as a ground type lore because it honestly feels like the best function that Reggie like E can fulfill outside of dedicated dual screens teams or at least the most fucking hilarious. And if we're being real, one of my goals for 2021 is for people to start calling Choice Band Explosion Reggie Eleki the Rev Eleki. So get on it, minions. There really are a lot of threatening Pokemon that really thrive when bulky ground types are out of the way. So of course I went with the boy, number 22 in ZU, number one in our hearts. God's sweetest little cutie. The children are developing relationships with all these Pokemon creatures. I do think that the several layers of obfuscation going on here was beneficial to me in the long run, with people thinking that the Reggie Lecky was going to have rising voltage, but then also questioning why I'm not just running Tapu Koko instead of Pincurchin. I think it really did help me confound my opponents with malicious mind games and clever play. Cinderace U-turns off of Toxapex and Slowbro and Moltres for my electric types. Garchomp gives me an electric immunity, sets rocks, and lets me wear down Lando and Swampert. And Mandibuzz gives me a Pokemon that can regurgitate into its child's eager mouth. Wow! Incredible! When I see no regenerating water types, my hand is drawn inexorably to the Cinderace button, as if possessed by a fucking phantom. When I clicked High Jump Kick, I wasn't even openly weeping. As much as usual. Since Reggie Lecky is my switch in to Tapu Koko, apparently, I am gonna have to go ahead and resort to the White Phosphorus on turn 3, having clearly already exhausted all other options. I know that people don't really like switching Ferrothorn into Reggie Eleki because they don't want to just get Volt Switch, so I wasn't really worried about that, but I was honestly hoping that they would just leave the Tapu Koko in instead of switching to Garchomp, because realistically, the Tapu Koko is much more threatening to me. Honestly, in the interest of having one fucking team that isn't weak to Tapu Koko, I should probably not be using Garchomp and use, like, Swampert or something instead, but, like, people also tell me I probably shouldn't be filling my mouth with sugar water and letting hummingbirds eat out of it, but this country is on fucking fire, bro. Just let me live my life while I can. That terrible scale shot is definitely because, for whatever reason, I actually expected this person to be enlightened enough to correctly identify Pincurchin as the greatest threat to their team. So I did think they would just sack something to the Earthquake and preserve the Ferrothorn. So this team's actually a little bit more viable, you could say. It's got a couple more good Pokémon on it. It's a little more virgin. So Exploud is like, kind of incredible. I love me a good click the button mon. But something that makes Exploud stand out among all the other cheesy low tiers with an incredible button is that since Scrappy Boom Burst goes through Substitute, it becomes one of the only Spectriere checks that isn't a big, boring beefcake. Which means that you can just fold it into a more aggro team 
ever so naturally. Like a draconian copyright law into a government stimulus bill. Trick Sticky Barb Clefable is a set that has kind of been making waves as a way to wear down, like, Toxapex, Heatran, Blissey, and other Pokémon that like to switch in to Clefable. I can't tell if it's overhyped or if my brain is just too small, but it felt like most of the time I would just get taunted or knocked off or they would switch in and assault Vest, Magirna, or Melmetal, which was basically like losing my arm in a fucking industrial accident. But I guess it's not like Clefable isn't amazing, even if you don't get the opportunity to show your opponent some item that's going to make them open Bulbapedia in another tab. So Heatran and Landorus are some Pokémon that maybe you've heard of, but the cool thing about this Landorus set is that it has Choice Scarf on it. Look, I'm just so fucking tired of losing to Magirna, okay? I'm so fucking tired. Fire Blast Garchomp is a way to lure Ferrothorn so that I don't have to ever click some stupid move on x that isn't 210 base power. I know that I sip insatiably from the Garchomp, but Cynthia had it right, bro. I'm about to change my fucking A to a G on Twitter because I'm the Garchomp King now. I'm pretty sure that this guy was angling for Gapdos to counter lead a particular ground type on my team, but I guess they just forgot that there's a new sheriff in town. I'll expect a full report in a couple of days, deputy. Okay, sheriff. Deputy. Sheriff. Deputy. Sheriff. Deputy. Sheriff. Deputy. Oh fuck. I gotta figure out how to switch Slowbro without clicking teleport. I, um, hmm, I think that you, uh, uh, okay, I figured it out. This was such a bad fucking hedge on my part, but honestly, I never expect other Nido Kings to be running Ice Beam, just because I never run Ice Beam. I'm sorry, I can't help that you motherfuckers haven't caught up to me living in 3021 yet. These are a couple of turns. These are a couple of turns. So I didn't think that he would just raw Magma Storm if I had a Heatran, so I thought it was safe to bring the Clefable in. And then I thought he would taunt me before Magma Storming me. So I went for Stealth Rock so that if he did that, it wouldn't reveal that I have Trick yet so I could conceal the set. And basically my end game was trying to engineer a situation where I can bring my Heatran in on a Magma Storm, and then we trade Heatrans with Earth Power. Which you could call the desperate flailings of a pitiable noob, but I call it ambition. And thanks to the glory of Satan, and my inability to make it to 1600 ELO, this guy didn't have taunt. So not only does Michael Fable live, I trick the sticky barb onto him, and I don't have to learn a fucking thing. Hey, willing to buy Nido King switch in so it will stop speedrunning through my team. At least when the flying type isn't fat, the serotonin is. I love to click Earthquake 17 times. Like a fucking AI. I stay in on this Tapu Fini and Earthquake it because honestly I thought that it would just kill me and if it did then I could bring in Exploud after that and either get a free kill or force him into Heatran. And since I know that Heatran doesn't have Taunt I could just bring Slowbro in on that and then set up Trick Room and just whoop. I'm pretty sure they thought I was gonna switch out because this Defog doesn't really do anything other than give Heatran one more switch in to Exploud, which they have to use immediately since Spectrier gives Exploud a free switch in. I think the only epic gamer maneuver Spectrier can pull to beat an Exploud is to like nasty plot on the switch and then flinch you with Dark Pulse. Alright, gang. It's time to admire all of Exploud's holes for a little bit. Man, shoutouts to Sticky Barb, actually. I'm sorry I was talking mess. And here's where we find out that this person doesn't have the iron will to use Choice Band Sucker Punch on Urshifu. Oh shit, that was five turns. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 